my master's and my Ph.D. And I have it all now, but uh, I'm principally self-trained. My university was the public library and well-chosen second-hand bookstores. So while I grew up poor, I grew up in a very rich environment, culturally rich. I grew up with a whole lot of love and affection, a lot of lap time, a lot of slap time, too, because I wasn't permitted to get away with too much. Miss Evelina Taylor is my fifth grade teacher, and she might be the foundation teacher in my life. In addition to teaching me basic good thinking and good conduct, she called me into her room during her lunch hour one day and told me to stop playing the fool because I was playing the fool just to get accepted. And she said, it is better to be right and march into hell than to follow a bunch of fools into heaven. I wanted to do something to impress Miss Taylor, and we had curry events on Friday. We wanted to say something unusual. Because I worked for white people before and after school, and they had magazines, they would receive them one day, read them hurriedly, or throw them away the next day. So when I got up for current events, I always had something decidedly different to say about my own people and about other people. No, I wanted to do something real, real big. So I went to a lawyer that uh, I worked for before and after school. I can still remember his name, Gag Steider, and I asked him for a book about my people in early world history. He says, I'm sorry, John, that uh, you came from a people who have no history. My mind would not accept that. I continued to search, and I opened the book called The New Negro, and I opened to an essay called The Negro Digs Up His Past. And for the first time, I knew that I came from a very old people, that we were older than slavery, older than oppression, older than Europe. Now the scramble began for more information. During the disaster years of the Great Depression, Americans in huge numbers take to the rails. They don't take Pullman cars or day coaches. They stow away on the freights, riding the rails in search of the opportunity to create a better life. John Henry Clark wrote them. Out of the South first, briefly to Chicago, and then on to New York City. I had a dream. I thought that because I'd had some success in writing local plays, writing lyrics for songs for local plays, and that I could go write professionally. It was a dream. It was a fantasy. I was pursuing this fantasy. At 18, you can pursue all kinds of fantasies. In the shadow of Manhattan's towering skyscrapers lies black, crawling Harlem, greatest Negro metropolis in the world. My impressions of the Harlem community, in the first place, it was a clean community. It was an orderly community. It was a safe community. It was a community with its customs that we have forgotten now. Street speaking customs, strolling customs, social customs. There was a time when 7th Avenue now Adam Power Boulevard was the street of choice. And you did not walk down 7th Avenue on Saturday or Sunday without a coat and a tie. There was a custom of getting your